All right. I was going. To, yeah, I'm going to do both. It was a decision whether to have have a go at Martin's video or comments. I'm going to do both. So quick one on Martin's video. Uh, Martin, I kind of went mm, saying I was uncomfortable with bigging up the internals. But you've big bigged up them, I think, in the last video. And I don't agree. I don't think we, we might need some bigging up, but we don't deserve any bigging up. I just can't see any use for us at all. Your bell curve thing is absolutely fine, you know, standard bell curve. They, the externals, um, obviously we know that this is being too silly, just dividing things up like this, but the main bulk of the bell curve is 90% them, the externals, and we're just down the last little shoulders here. The world that everyone has to deal with is made in their image. It's made for them, by them. It's theirs. What use are we at all? We've got as far as we might be better in a crisis because we won't run around screaming. But the chances are we would, won't even be called on in a crisis. I mean, they will have had their own thing. You know, it's, it's just very rare that we'll be of any use. Okay, an airplane's falling out of the sky and there's one person that, in the passengers that isn't screaming. Is it going down? What use is the one person that's not screaming? None. So I, I can't think of any reason to big up our position. We... we 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 might think that we deserve it but they don't think that we deserve it and there's no place for us they haven't created places for us google might have done i don't know if in these modern things but th there's no bloody place for us and i'm not complaining about that i'm just stating it there's there's no reason there should be there's no great advantage of somebody who doesn't want to bloody well be in their silly game hey eh? And, you know, I'm not, not, I mean, most of them don't want to be in the silly game either when it comes to work, but no, no, no big ups for us at all. And um, I'll, I'll set you the task of thinking of some really good examples of where internals are of any use. Right. Comments. Now, this is going to be a very difficult video. But it's based on your your comments. So you've done it. Okay. But there's some good... This is why I'm doing it. I think there's an awful lot of difficult stuff in here that's going to make this a very boring video. But there are little highlights of good things. Which makes it a worthwhile video, probably. Right, I won't do names, I'll just do the comments. When I do nothing, I am often questioned, what are you doing? Well, nothing, I'm just sitting here. And it's like I have to defend what I'm not doing when I'm not doing something. Why can't people just sit and do nothing? I guess that's too boring. It very much upsets the externals, very much upsets them, that anybody can sit there and just sit there, very much upsets them. Um, every, all internals would have noticed that, that you really have to go off and be quiet on your own because they won't let you alone just being quiet. No way. They do get very upset by it. Okay, this is Martin, but I won't normally mention the people. I would like to do more sit and do nothing, but probably have to wait till I'm a bit older when there's more, when there's more order. No, I don't think so. Um, sitting and doing nothing, I mean, you sleep eight hours of the day, work eight hours of the day. There's still eight hours of the day to sit and do nothing if that's really what you want to do. There's never an excuse for anybody not to sit and do nothing if that's what they want to do. 
Right, this comment starts well and then is another of these that goes off being difficult. Almost all desires are a look towards the future. Right, we've got a statement of Buddhism here and I might come back to it because, you know, call Buddhism a religion, they say it's not. But an entire religion is based around this one sentence, almost all desires are a look towards the future. That's Buddhism in a sentence. So it's got to have a lot about it because it's taken up an awful lot of people's time over the last... When was Buddha? Can't think. Was he 500 years before Christ? I think he was, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he was about 500 before. Don't know. Okay, those desires give us goals, a purpose. Mm. This is an excuse for modern living, that. So to, oh yes, this one. So to willfully meander through life, willfully meander through life. It's a bit of a mashup, that, isn't it? You're going to willfully meander. It doesn't work. So you know you're talking rubbish on that one. So to willfully meander through life, divorced from any long-term goals or desires. Who's going to be divorced from long-term goals or desires? is to re relegate ourselves to a much less meaningful existence, don't you think? Is that really a question? No, you can just set your long-term goals if you if you want. But then let them change. You, you set it, you go, bluff, that's a long-term goal. You put it in, consider it. you don't have to come back and worry it all the time. You know, look at it every, if it's a long-term goal, look at it every year. Christmas Day, if you like. Doesn't have to bother your life. If it's a long-term goal, there's lots I can say about this. It's most difficult, and I understand it's most difficult for me, who I'm stating as an internal, retired, to talk to what might be externals in the workplace now. It's just a very difficult thing, and I should really set out who I'm talking to, when and why. But this is just comments, and I know it's going to be a mess. Like most things in life, I don't think this is an either-or situation. I think there's room, maybe even a need, for both modes of thinking. It's just a matter of finding a proper balance. Now, I would like to know that you're sure what these two modes of thinking are. Because that comment coming uh, it comes over to me as I'd like everything please I'd like an excuse carte blanche to do anything I like and call it whatever I want to call it which is fine you know everyone wants the freedom to do that but the whole comment just comes over as a, a mashup of I want everything except the opening sentence which is Buddhism almost all desires are a look towards the future which I'm sure we'll come back to Right, moving on. Here you shine a little more as a mystic. Well, it's a very good start, but then it goes to right shit. I agree with what you've said about jobs. Hope, hopefully or probably that's that if you've got a job and you're doing a job, then do the bloody job properly. Because if not, you're just patheticing up your own life. You're just making your own life pathetic. Simply put, any job that pronounces a future goal as being more important than your present preoccupation may or may not pay you well, comma, but is either a waste of your life or at least makes you a wasteful worker. Now, I've read that four or five times and I've never made any sense of it, so I'm not going to repeat it here. And, you know, an interesting quote from J.D. Rockefeller. I was early taught to work as well as play my life has been one long happy holiday full of work and full of play i dropped the worry on the way and god was good to me every day it's crap poetry it's crap sentiment from a very crap individual he was a bastard basically 
and maybe he enjoyed being a bastard and um, had a wonderful life being a bastard every day. And God was good to me every day. Was God good to all the people that he absolutely and completely shafted and ruined, literally ruined their lives? Was would, Are they expected to say, oh, God's been good to me that Rockefeller came along and steamrolled over the top of me? I dropped the worry on my way. Was that after the first million, the first 10 million, the first 100 million? And he was, he was, a, he was a God botherer, but I mean, that doesn't matter. I was, I mean, but to quote that, it's pathetic. It's truly, truly pathetic. I mean, the whole thing about that, thinking to quote it to me is pathetic. To quote it to anybody is pathetic. To th quote it about John D. Rockefeller is pathetic. To mention God is pathetic. The whole thing was pathetic. The only good thing about that comment was saying that I was shining as a mystic. Right, next comment. Reminds me of the discussion in Gurdjieff's work about the food of impressions, claiming we need new, different impressions, as we need varying forms of food, food as nutrition. Consider the historic importance given to spices. People wanted the spice. You could say it was for varying to vary their nutrition or something. It was just fashion. It was dinner party. Oh, yes, I've got, yes, plenty, yes, sure. Cook always puts this new spice in. Or you go to a dinner party and they've not put it in. Oh, you haven't bought any of the new blah, blah. It's just fashionable shit. Nutrition doesn't have to be different or anything like that. I mean, it's just bollocks. It's just titivation shit. It's just rubbish. So at whatever point it was trying to make, or Gurdjieff was trying to make, was badly made. I have over 150 YouTube channels I've subbed to. I can find interesting blabbermouths blathering about stuff interesting to me most any time. Yeah, I'm sure we all can. Should that fail, then there's music. I note the poor sods are stuck with who done it shows and someone's got cut talent kind of shit or far worse. I think that's saying that YouTube's better than television, so I totally agree with that. And as I say, the, the more thing is the control. Um, if somebody's blabbering on their mouth and you don't like it, you just turn it off and go on to the next thing. As soon as they disappoint you, turn them off. Or be conscientious and say, well, I'll give this person a chance and I'll let him go right through to the end. It's like television and the uh, everyone's noticed it. The power of the person with the flicker. Click, 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 click. Changing channel. Chuk, 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 chuk. Life of changing channels. Boredom. Thought or feeling? Question mark. I think I'm bored or I feel I'm bored. It's an interesting question. But not being bored for so long, I don't think I can answer it. I think you've got to. I don't think you can remember to answer it. As in, it's not a memory you can drag up and think. Well, that was. A, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. And drink used to do it to me. It used to say to me, "Drink or you'll be bored." Or if boredom, boredom used to come quicker, or used to to come. And then if I started drinking, the boredom would go away. It was just something that the brain used to get me to drink. With the business and lots of things and people in my life, I rarely get bored. Get bored? OMG, I've gotten bored. I imagine that's just a joke. Think you might get the boredom if you didn't or couldn't do YouTube vids. No, I think that's a question to me. Would I get bored if I didn't do the YouTube vids? No. I might think I might. You, you, you kind of you think it in a, in a way that you go, 
it takes me at least two hours, let's say, of doing the YouTube vids and comments and that sort of thing in a day. I think, well, what could I, what could I possibly fill that two hours with? But it, you, you don't um, think, you don't manage the filling of the two hours. The f two hours just fill themselves up. It's just like taking something out of water. The water just fills in and makes the space, fills the space in, or air, or whatever it might be. It just happens. You can't, if you, you know, the brain can't automatically or instantly think what the things would be that would replace that amount of time, the two hours of my YouTube video. I can't think what it might be, but all I know is it would happen. It's like the television people. They would think, throw the television by. What the hell would I do with that 17 hours a day that I watch television? All right, three hours a night. What would I possibly do in the evening for three hours a night? Can't possibly imagine. Better watch television for the rest of my life. It's just an excuse because the brain can't think what would happen to fill those hours up. But something would. It's like we do something every single moment of the 24 hours. Something would. You might even pick up a book and read it. Um, the older I get, it often seems as most everything is the same old shit and could be labelled boring. If that's your attitude about things, yes, it could be. Even my very own thoughts and thinking along with others. Maybe too much UG Christian Murty. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's as, as I said, from to with Martin getting stuck. And there's no doubt you've got stuck on Gurdjieff and probably you have watched too much UG Krishnamurti. You can't ever really say to somebody you shouldn't have done it, but you shouldn't have done it. You've got stuck on Gurdjieff and you do this thing, everybody does it. Investment is the word that comes to my mind because I remember a girl getting sacked and I just happened to be on the stairs as she was getting sacked and the boss was shouting down at her and she was shouting up at the boss and I was kind of trapped in the middle, couldn't get up or down. And she was saying, mais j'ai investi. I have invested. In other words, I have invested in this company. I mean, she was only about 20, the poor little girl, but I mean, you know, whatever it was, it would have been a percentage of her life. J'ai investi. I, I have invested. And this is what people do. They, um, I imagine it's the same for God up here. If you've spent an awful lot of time going to church, you're just not going to stop being a God botherer. Because that is to say, I wasted my time going to church in the old days. Maybe it's the same with the television watchers. You can't stop now because if you stop now, it's as to say, God, I was a fucking idiot to watch that much television. It was crap. So it's best never to find out that it was crap by keeping doing it. You've obviously done too much Gurdjieff and felt that you had to do more Gurdjieff because to stop doing Gurdjieff was to say, maybe I've wasted my time with too much Gurdjieff. And it's a terrible area that you can get into which you won't get into if you keep moving on. Move from Gurdjieff over to Spinoza. Spinoza to Kant. Kant to Schopenhauer. Schopenhauer to Buddha. But yeah, you've made a mistake in your life that you've done too much Gurdjieff and watched too many UG Krishnamurti videos. It's not tragic. Reply to that UG, so that's UG Krishnamurti, was against gurus, yet he lived like one. It must be said, yes. Travelled, yes. <laughs> Held speeches, yes. Said there are no mystic experiences, yes. But his views of life came after a Kundalini experience. There was a moment, like Lisa says she had a moment, where 
things changed, whatever. Calling it a Kundalini experience is childish nonsense. It's coming from somebody who's done too much reading or whatevering about Kundalini. You know, you, you get, and hopefully you can get out of that sort of Kundalini crap and move on to some other crap. Because otherwise you'll spend your whole life saying, Kundalini here, a Kundalini there, and talking crap for the rest of your life. Just don't do it. Get out. Move on. But an interesting character, no doubt, Yuji Krishnamurti, certainly, as opposed to Jiddu Krishnamurti, who I think he mostly had a go at, who wasn't. Um, and Martin says, he's, well, I don't know why I'm saying Martin, <laughs> bringing him out to be noted all the time. He's a dead bastard now, which is, I suppose, because it's a good quote, because he, he in, yeah. Uh, re next comment is, haha, yes, funny how he called everybody bastards. Uh, and he did, seemingly, from the many Yuji Krishnamurti videos that I've watched. Uh, then last comment, obviously primarily pointed at Osho and his many Mercedes in the US at the time. I, I'd say that was wrong, but I don't care. Um, right, new comment. Strikes, you know, you asked me for it. You know, you didn't ask for this um, video, but, you know, why it takes up two hours of my time is some of these comments, if I'm to answer them, I have to translate them from where they've come from. And they're coming from often coming from very complex places and i've got to give if i'm going to give an answer it's like if i'm going to do my work i want to do my work properly some of my answers might look a bit flippant kind of ah fuck off you stupid git but i'm saying fuck off you stupid git after giving it some r reflection okay another comment strikes me that aside from feeding ourselves and avoiding the powers of entropy of things in our lives we seem to need to find something to be against or opposed to a lot of people do but some people don't i don't think i do i don't find any great need to um to have anything to be against the things I bump into, up into in my life that I can think, oh yeah, well I'm against that. But there aren't much. There isn't much. What is there? There's nothing consistent, I don't think. Except television. And people that believe in free will. Everyone's got their little things, but... No, I don't, I don't think it's a necessary... I think it's what we do see in the world, but I don't say it's, I think it's a necessary... Um, thing that we see in the world. I don't think it necessarily has to be there. A yin yangy kind of thing. No, I don't think so. No. I think it would come, be stretched out, stretched by. The more you're really wanting something, more likely that you'll be really disliking or not wanting something on this side. But if you're wants and desires are small i imagine your diswants and disdesires are small as well so yes if you're an expansive outside external person with great wants and desires out here i would think there'll be you know things that are getting in the way of your big big wants and desires will be big dislikes but if you're just a retired person like me sitting in a field um, there's nothing much to be disliking of or, you know, wanting to be against. Mr. G, Gurdjieff, allegedly said that we have to give up our likes and dislikes on the journey to developing a real self. And that's a real self with a capital R. So that's a really big real self. If I didn't want to change shit, I didn't like or think wasn't correct then I would get the boredom disease, question mark. Now off to the shop to bring about change. Ha! Huh. I think there are two things there. There's 
um, if I didn't want change, you can, there's, there's efficiency sort of things. If you at your work can see that something isn't being done efficiently, then it should be changed. If there's something at your work that you don't like, there's no necessity to change it because you can see in your own head it's just your own personal dislike of it. There are two different things going on there. There is the efficiency thing and there is the liking thing. In other words, one's either... One is the quick thing, the, oh, I don't like that, and one is the thinky thing, we can do that better, and they are completely different. Earlier, smaller number of videos. Axion says that I'm, I was, yeah, I was, I was channeling Jordan Peterson in that video, and I imagine it's about, I didn't want to ask which bit it was, because I'm not terrifically keen on Jordan Peterson, so I wasn't terrifically keen on knowing actually which, which bit it was but I imagine it's the what the bit that says that if you're going to do work you're doing whatever you are doing doesn't matter who's paying you but whatever you're doing at the time you're doing it for yourself and if you're going to do it badly then you're doing yourself badly I imagine that's the Peterson thing go on Axiom what is it you can tell me in this video Two more. Next one. Anticipation, dissatisfaction, daydreaming, daydreaming, boredom, escapism, a me problem? Question mark. Y yes, probably. Yes. Yes, probably. It's all what people call ego. Now, I, I don't. I know that. If I've done it before, as soon as you start talking of ego, the whole th conversation gets stuck. So I, I don't know where to go without... It's a me problem, yeah. If there is something, some understanding as to why something may be a bother, it may be addressed. The first and last option is an attitudinal alignment, the always available option. Yes and no. I, I get the idea that if attitudinal alignment is get your like work, get your attitude right, it sounds too much like. Let's move on. Focus job effort as the appearance of pride in workmanship, conscientiousness. Yes, so this is what might, might, we might be talking about. May please management but may also piss off co-workers, a them problem. Stuff the them problem. You're not living their lives, you're living your life. Get your own life in order. Do not do bad work because you think it'll impress somebody else. It won't. All they'll go is, <laughs> get your own life in order. Agreed. Saying a waste of now should always be buttered up with... Scare quote gesticulations, are they them? Now, if we butter up another pumpernickled slice of how to live, a voila, a more savoury shit sandwich. And don't go in for that shit sandwich stuff. It's got too much baggage. Life is a shit sandwich and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't have to be. Just do it properly. Just do everything you're doing to the best of your ability and you'll find that life will not be shit it just won't be can i guarantee it you can be totally and utterly abused and from the outside your life might look like shit but if you're really 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 doing your best you'll revel in it life gets shit when my life gets you to do shit do not do shit one last comment. God, we're nearly at half an hour. Isn't the anticipation of the future what makes life bearable? No. The sweet lies one tells oneself in order to get by. No. 
I'm foregoing my life at the moment, college, second job, etc., in the hopes that my life will be better in the future. College equals... Oh, I'm only allowed to do half hour. Okay. Camera's off because I'm only allowed to do half hour. So, I, but I can go on with the audio uh, because we've only got this much left. College equals better paying career, second job, might saving up for sponsoring a new car, house, vacation, staying in your own business. This is just classic example of a young person um, not concentrating on what they're doing now, but daydreaming about the future. Do not daydream about the future as much as you can. Do not daydream about the future. Do what you are doing now and do it now and do it well. End of. Bye.